Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to this ERC webinar on uh, virtual reality for CPR training. Uh, we are sorry for the little bit delay with the technical issue, but we are ready to start and are happy to co-moderate this uh, webinar with uh, Federico Semeraro from uh, Italy. And um, Federico, if you want to say something. Yeah, hello to everybody. Sorry, sorry again for being late. We, we are very happy to be here to talk about virtual reality. So we left the stage, leave the stage to the, the first speaker, Tommaso. Please introduce yeah. Martin. Yeah, Let, thank let's you. Let's start with uh, Martin Percy from uh, UK. He's a director of interactive films, uh, both for flat screen and also for virtual reality assets. And uh, he is known for being the father of Lifesaver and Lifesaver VR UK. And uh, for his work, he, he won numerous awards, including an Emmy Award. And uh, uh, Martin, the, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, sorry, Tomaso, do you want me to introduce myself or shall I just kick straight into my talk? Yeah, go. Straight into the talk. Okay, so hello, everyone. Thank you for your patience. Uh, sorry to keep you waiting. Uh, so I feel like a little bit of an imposter here because I am an interactive filmmaker, not exactly a VR um, creator. But uh, let me show you some things and hopefully you will find something interesting. So I'm going to talk about CPR training with interactive films, first in VR and first and then for flat screens. OK, so um, one point to make first is that none of the films that you're going to see would exist without Dr. Jazz Saw, Dr. Andy Lockie, uh, the Resuscitation Council UK and the UK government who supported the first Lifesaver film. So let's kick off with Lifesaver VR, which is one particular member of the Lifesaver family, which we did obviously in VR. So let me show you a trailer for that, and I think you will get an idea of uh, what it is. Okay, so I'll press the button. You should see video and hear audio. If you don't, please shout out. Otherwise, here we go. Oh, beg your pardon. Just a moment. Sorry, everyone, the bugs are coming thick and fast today. Let's try that sharing again. OK, let's have another go. I'll press the button. You should see video and hear audio. Here we go. Lifesaver VR is an interactive VR film for teenagers where you have to save someone's life by making smart choices and doing CPR. I think having it in VR makes a difference because you feel much more like you're in the situation and like it depends on you rather than just being told or watching it on TV. In tests with teenagers, confidence in doing CPR rose from 38% before playing Lifesaver VR to 86% after it. All those tested said that it made them more likely, or much more likely, to attempt CPR in a real emergency. At the start of Lifesaver VR, a group of friends are relaxing when one of them, Harry, collapses with a cardiac arrest. He will be dead in 10 minutes unless you Harry. do the right thing. Guys! What would you do? Run to help Harry now? or check for danger first. Watch out for the glass! You interactively control Harry? the actions of Harry's friend Louise as she tries to save him. The Harry, film help. experiments with different Harry. forms of VR. Harry. This first Harry. half is shot like a regular film, Harry, can you hear me? but you watch it in VR yeah. cinema mode on your Harry. headset. Call an ambulance! The phone's in there. No, he's just as mobile. What? You make Don't choices by turning your head to put a red circle over the option that you think is right. Exactly. He might choke. In the second half of the film, you have to make more choices and do CPR. For this, we go into full 360 video. You have to push down hard two times a second. Your headset senses your movements and gives you feedback. 
Doing it in VR, I felt like I was doing it myself, whereas in a video, somebody else is doing it. There was one point when I thought there was no hope, so I thought I was going to cry. No, I have to do it! <laughs> if you make the wrong decisions, or your CPR speed is bad, then Harry will die. He's breathing normally, he's waking up! But if you do the right thing, you'll sense the thrill of saving a life. Lifesaver VR uses virtual reality to put teenagers into the world of a film and change that world. And it gives them the skills to save others in real life. Now I feel like I have enough confidence to go over and do something. When you do it yourself, you become really, really happy because you just saved that person's life. Okay, so that's a little trailer for uh, Lifesaver VR. Now, um, uh, one thing that you quite often hear discussed is people talking about the difference between VR, filmmaking for VR and filmmaking for flat screens. So when we shot Lifesaver VR, the day before, we shot exactly the same material with the same actors in the same locations for flat screens. And so we have an interesting comparison video here. This shows you precisely the same material shot on two consecutive days. But on the left, you see the VR version, and on the right, you see the flat screen version. Now, one key thing from a filmmaking point of view with uh, VR is you can't cut as much. So as you see with the flat screen version, uh, on the right, we're constantly cutting. We're going into the faces of the the bystanders, into the faces of the victims. Whereas with VR, you don't have that flexibility because you'll make people feel sick. You're you're more you have to stay more rooted in one place and then stay with it. Um, so from a filmmaking point of view, that's one big difference between these these two films. Now uh, we've put all of these links uh, for you publicly. So if you want to have a look at that in more detail, uh, you can. So as you saw, we got a good uh, reaction from um, Lifesaver VR, um, but Lifesaver VR is kind of a spin-off of a film called Li a series of films called Lifesaver, which we made about ten years ago. Um, and even those that most of those were made for flat screens, they also had a very significant effect on the people that used them, and they used technology in, I think, an interesting new way for teaching people CPR. So what I'd like to do now is show you uh, something of Lifesaver, uh, and that will give you an idea about that. Okay, here we go. Again, if you don't hear anything, please shout out. Lifesaver is an experiment in a new way to teach emergency skills. What are you doing? It's a movie you play like a game. It throws you into three situations where someone will be dead in 10 minutes unless you do the right thing. Get it wrong and see the consequences. Come on, breathe then. What did you do? Call for an ambulance. Okay. Get it right and sense the thrill of saving a life. Shouldn't we just wait for the ambulance people to arrive? No, no, he can't wait. But does Lifesaver really work? Formal medical research has been published on the effectiveness of Lifesaver. The research was done by a team of British doctors working with 81 school students. It compared Lifesaver with traditional CPR training, which needs CPR mannequins and expert teachers. The research found that Lifesaver by itself is 29% more effective at teaching CPR than traditional training, and it doesn't need CPR mannequins or teachers. The research also found that Lifesaver combined with traditional training is 115% more effective than traditional training alone. And here is someone who has saved a life with Lifesaver. My wife showed me the Lifesaver app at home one evening. And then, literally two days later, I was on a lunchtime run along Victoria Embankment in London when I saw that a jogger had collapsed in front of me. He'd had a cardiac arrest. 
I knew what to do and I had the confidence to do it because of the Lifesaver app. The man was in hospital for several weeks, but he survived. On a lighter note for film fans. Lifesaver features the first professional role of Daisy Ridley, star of the new Star Wars films. Lifesaver has won many international awards. Now we want to apply the Lifesaver approach to new areas and save lives worldwide. Thank you so much. Oh, it's okay. I just hope Thank you okay. so much. Thank you. <laughs> well done. You did a brilliant job. Well done. Thanks. Okay, so that's Lifesaver, and that shows that we can take some of the techniques that you know people love about VR and also make them work in um, with flat screens. Now, there's one place that Lifesaver kind of struggles a bit, which is in classrooms, because obviously most uh, Teachers do not want uh, their pupils to pull out their own mobile phones. So I got talking to a doctor um, at the um, University of Nevada called Dr. Laurel Toft, uh, and I worked with her to create something called Heart Class. And so this is taking the same approach, but here it's for um, a situation where you've got one computer, one teacher, and 30 kids all watching the screen connected to that one com one um, uh, computer. Uh, so it's a way that you can teach CPR to a group. So let's have a look, quick look at that. And the Emmy goes to heart class. Mr. Ryan? Alex, guys, come in here. Mr. Ryan? Mr. Ryan, are you OK? For me, it was very realistic. Like, if, he was, if I was put in that situation, what would I do? You're gonna break his ribs! Could Sarah break Mr. Ryan's ribs? Yes or no? Yes! It made me feel like I could actually save somebody. No, no, Sarah, you can't! I have to. No, you can't! <laughs> okay, so that shows you that we got, also get very good results uh, and great um, reactions from um, uh, from real users, not just without VR, but with flat screens and indeed with 30 people sharing one flat screen. So just to wrap up very quickly, so why do, so one key thing about this is we use real people, why? So we do it to simulate the panic of a real crisis and thus help to overcome the trained bystander effect. You've got a real victim, you've got real people screaming and shouting at you all the way through. Why not do it in CGI? So CGI, much as I love CGI characters, they don't have the same emotional impact as real people. And remember, for many games, this is not a bug, it's an essential feature. With, you know, think of a beat-em-up game or a shoot-em-up game. If you really felt as emotionally engaged with a CGI character as you do shooting a real person, people would get post-traumatic stress disorder just from playing, you know, any normal um, shoot 'em up game. So it's it's actually important that CGI characters don't have quite the same uh, emotional impact. So I just say beware SOS, shiny object syndrome. Um, you know, VR is great. I love VR. But let's not forget, there are billions of phones and computers in the world. So please also consider innovating with those, even though you won't get Silicon Valley excited. But topics that could be handled for intera by interactive films in VR or flat screens include pediatric CPR, drowning, stroke, stop the bleed, asthma attack, suicide, which I've already done, uh, one initial film for, and many, many more. Um, if you're interested in discussing any of this further, I, I do apologize. I'm going to have to go in about three minutes. Um, but I'm Martin Percy. Please don't hesitate to get in touch at martin at martinpercy.com. Thank you very much. Thank you, Martin. Uh, amazing presentation. Uh, you replied to my question. I, I have in mind what is the best way to share uh, VR. So we, we need to use a uh, mobile phone everywhere. Lifesaver is a very amazing example of uh, non-real VR, but to share content uh, through, through mobile phone. Thank you again for your amazing presentation.
please keep in touch. If you want to uh, have some, some, I put on Slido. If you want some content with uh, with Martin, please write to to him. It's a uh, it's a real pleasure to be with you to to today. And may the fools be with you always. Also, <laughs> because you yes. involved, you know, you are so lucky because you are involved with one of the characters of Star Wars. So I'm so jealous. Thank you so much. Indeed, she went from lifesaver to lightsabers, as we like to say. Yeah, lifesaver yeah. to lightsaber. Thank you, yeah. Martin. Thanks, Federico. Thank you, everyone. I'm sure it'll be great Thank you. Um, session. Thanks Thank very much. Thank you. Bye. Next speaker from UK to Pona, Silvia Aranda Garcia. Welcome. Uh, she's a professor in sports science, a researcher interested in out of hospital emergencies, education, and new technology and droning prevention from the University of Barcelona. So, Silvia, we are very happy to hear you, your presentation and the stage is yours. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, Federico, for introducing me and for the opportunity to share our experience of uh, smart glasses and augmented reality for, for CPR. I'm going to, to share my screen. Okay, well, I'm going to speak uh, based on different studies that we made uh, with uh, Roberto Barcala as a uh, leader. Our experience with smart glasses began just uh, over a year ago, and we have done research uh, using smart glasses to video assist in emergencies and also to train CPR. In fact, these two manuscripts, which uh, are being submitted for publication in journals, are related to CPR training. Our aim was to analyze the augmented reality with smart glasses as a basic like uh, life uh, support teaching learning tool uh, for lay people. And well, I'm, I'm going to talk about the, the smart glasses uh, connectivity. Uh, we use uh, this model of smart glasses. It's named it, uh, Blade by Butix. And the glasses connect uh, via Wi-Fi uh, with the, the VRA app to make a video call. And the instructor can see and he can hear on his computer the same as the person who wears the, the glasses, just uh, as you can see on the right on the screen. Well, the communication is bidirectional from smart glasses to, to the computer and from the computer to, to the smart glasses. From the smart glasses to, to the computer, the, the instructor can, can see and hear the same as, as the participant. And from computer, the instructor um, talks to, to the participant and sends uh, images, uh, GIFs, or, or videos uh, that uh, the participant will see on, on his smart glasses. It look, looks like uh, just in the Dragon Ball, uh, Dragon Ball cartoon series uh, in the lens of, of glasses. And for example, these two GIFs um, were sent to the smart glasses by the instructor in one of our studies. One of them, um, we show uh, them to, to see the technique to assess uh, breathing and, and the other one uh, to how to perform chest compressions. In this way, we create this uh, learning in, in environment with augmented reality and additional information related to, to CPR. This was in a real fisherman CPR training situation that uh, we did uh, on a boat while sailing. 
And this is the, the view that the instructor will have on his uh, computer. Uh, he was teaching the, the fisherman how to assess breathing or how, or how to, to use the, the AID. And well, uh, based on our experience uh, with this uh, augmented reality uh, with smart glasses for CPR training, we highlight uh, three aspects. Uh, the first one is that uh, it is uh, feasible to use this technology for CPR training. Um, if you have a, a good uh, Wi-Fi connectivity. And also the um, all participants reported that the smart glasses were really easy to use. The second highlight uh, is uh, related to the, the results of comparing CPR training with augmented reality with smart glasses with uh, traditional, uh, very brief training on CPR. And after the training, uh, we compare how participants perform in, in a sim simulated cardiac arrest situation and we assessed uh, data on the ABC approach, the use of the AID, the quality of CPR and, and the type. On the ABC approach, uh, we found that uh, only in the breathing assessment, there were differences between, between groups uh, in this case in favor of the group of smart glasses in which everyone did it uh, perfectly. In the, on the use of the, the EID, we found that uh, with both methods, they learn uh, similarly. Um, and the participants with smart glasses and, and ensures better that uh, no one was uh, touching the, the victim when pushing the, the shock button. In the variables related to quality of CPR, um, there were no differences between groups and the, the performance of the smart glasses group was the same that uh, the control group with uh, traditional uh, training on CPR. And finally, in action times uh, were similar in both groups, except for the time from, from the start of the scenario to the arrival of the AID which was uh, eight seconds faster on average in the control group. And well, uh, based on, on these results, uh, in comparison to traditional training, learning with the smart glasses is, uh, um, is uh, as good as with traditional face-to-face -face, uh, education. And this uh, including content on the ABC approach, the quality of CPR and also the, the use of the, the AID. The, the third uh, highlight was that this augmented reality uh, can be applied in different out of hospital environments uh, while sailing on a boat or of course uh, in a classroom. And all of that also for for lay people. We found some limitations. Uh, the, the main limitations that we, we found was um, related to the bat battery duration, which is good for a brief training, but for connection of more than half an hour, uh, it is necessary to connect an external battery. Also for those participants who have uh, vision problems such as uh, myopia, uh, they will not be able to see the gifts well. And wearing the smart glasses over their uh, own glasses was really uncomfortable. With contact uh, lenses, there are uh, no such problems.
the CPR training with this type of augmented reality uh, is interesting and has, has great potential because the instructor can adapt these uh, corrections, the feedback in real time, based on what uh, he sees and he hears. For its potential uh, to teach CPR in remote um, areas with the remote instructor. And it could, it could be applicable uh, even in challenging environments, for example, in aquatic uh, environments. And in, in conclusion, uh, the augmented reality with smart glasses can be a good resource for lay people to train CPR. It is a potentially interesting methodology so that the instructor can, can teach uh, anywhere uh, with a good Wi-Fi connectivity. Okay. Uh, Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer it after. Thank you very much, Silvia. And uh, everyone, if you have a question, please send on Slido and we'll try to answer every question at the end of uh, the last presentation. So uh, now it's uh, time and it's a pleasure to introduce Federico Semeraro, uh, consultant in anesthesia and intensive care in Bologna from Ospedale Maggiore of Bologna, Italy. Uh, you may know him because he's the chair elect of uh, the ERC or because he's a very passionate and skilled expert in uh, VR technology. And uh, so, Federico, it's a pleasure to leave the stage to you. Thank you very much, Tommaso. Thank you to everybody to be here to get to today again. So, uh, in, in honor to Silvia, I put my small glasses for this presentation. Uh, I Talk about uh, virtual reality for kids save life. Uh, it's uh, a very nice area of research. Uh, this is my conflict of interest, as you know. And this, dedicated, this presentation, as usual, is dedicated to the next generation. Uh, Viola is born 14 uh, February 2018. Uh, first photo with iPhone, slap with Spotify. First augmented reality experience uh, some years ago. So this is the next generation. And please, today, remember Carrie Fisher, uh, today, uh, she, she was the first augmented reality of Star Wars in 1977. So help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you are my only hope. So remember Carrie Fisher and Leia. So a long time ago in the galaxy far, far away, uh, we started in 2009, uh, some research on VR, and we try to, uh, as a pioneer, uh, install uh, CPR on, on virtual reality in virtual reality. We continue on this track with a serious game. Uh, we produce a serious game called Relieve, and we publish in Italian, English, and Dutch because we receive a prize uh, from Netherlands, and we use extensively in the school uh, with school children during cardiac arrest awareness. And at that time, we have again, as a pioneer, we use relief with Oculus uh, in its first edition. So we try to use first um, first relief in a in, in a virtual reality environment. We use relief. We publish it, and we use as a quality CPR feedback with school children. And this uh, was our conclusion on, on 2017. So after that, we asked to the ERC world and not only to the ERC world, what they think about VR. How cool is that? So we receive a, a lot of responses from several country. Uh, look into the letter of editor. Uh, uh, many of them say, yes, maybe could, we could use uh, VR for, for training. So 10 years challenge from 2008 and 2009, and we presented the virtual reality CPR during the ERC Congress in Bologna, and it was a very nice experience. And this was uh, some memories. 
from EFT 2018 Bologna with the uh, VRCPR. And we use uh, this kind of technology with uh, headset uh, tracking uh, on, on the wrist. We all use uh, a technique uh, between uh, Marty, uh, Martin uh, spoke about real person. We use photogrammetry. So we take a lot of photo from a real person and we reproduce in VR. So we use photogrammetry in uh, virtual reality. We tested uh, on human, on uh, medical students, only to compare VR, CPR with standard reference, the mannequin, only to understand if uh, the motion detection technology to track the movement in the space uh, is similar to a mannequin. This is the Bland Altman plot of chest compression depth and chest compression rate comparison between Resucian and VR CPR. If you look at the, uh, at the chest compression depth, the difference was only 3.7 millimeters and the rate is only 1.4. So works. Uh, that was our conclusion. Uh, we used uh, before pandemia uh, during a, a pilot course in a VLS course with uh, VR CPR and we collect data from attendees. And last, last year, uh, we produced a guideline about system saving life. We are completely convinced that this technology is absolutely okay with kids. So this is the recommendation for uh, kids in life. All school children should routinely receive CPR training each year. Based on that, uh, here in Italy, we received some funding and in collaboration with the Italian Resuscitation Council, we produce a pathway, a program for kids. Imagine uh, from primary school, uh, we use a tail called a breathtaking picnic, and we produce the VR version of this tail uh, because we released the breathtaking picnic in 2015. For the secondary school, we produce school of CPR VR. Uh, these two apps you can use easily uh, with a, a smartphone and you can use with a, a cardboard with the intention to convince the school children to use direct responder is our first, um, first responder app to engage population in, car in case of cardiac arrest. This is our program. This is Picnic VR. You can download for free. You can find uh, on Android and iOS. And this was our first event in a primary school. It was amazing. Blended learning with mannequin, with kids, in VR with a, with a tail, they enjoy a lot. And uh, we spread the word in the primary school about uh, uh, CPR training. Uh, this is my, uh, my daughter that play with the uh, Breitake Picnic. Uh, during the tail, you can clap your hands and synchronize your clapping with, uh, with uh, uh, the fox in, in the story. And this is the second app for uh, the secondary school, School of CPR, VR. And we use yesterday in a, in a secondary school, uh, in, always in a blended learning approach, mannequin. And there was this nice uh, student with the amazing, amazing message. There was never a good war or a bad piece. And we use extensively. Look at the uh, face of the students. They are scared, they are amazed. Uh, they are very involved. So uh, this is uh, our experience with the secondary school. We use extensively also last week uh, during World Startup Day 2022. So we used during uh, our event as a, a tool to, uh, to transfer the, the, the content to the school children. And we are lucky in Italy because uh, from last year we have a law. And in this law, we have a, uh, one article that uh, said that we need uh, to install CPR education in the school. So thank you very much to Ralph McKinnon, the next speaker, because he wrote a very nice article, a very, very nice scoping review. Uh, but uh, I, I leave it after to, to Ralph uh, to describe uh, the science uh, on virtual reality. But 
uh, I was very touched because he mentioned as the first father of virtual reality. So I was the father. Now it's your turn to work on VR. And again, a life is like a garden. Perfect moments yet be had, but not preserved except in memory. So live and long and prosper to all of you. Thank you very much indeed. From this, it's a real pleasure to introduce you, uh, Ralph McKinnon. Uh, he's a, a consultant, pediatric anesthetist. Uh, we asked Ralph to put some science on augmented reality and virtual reality. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you to be here with us and light us with your science, uh, the stage yours. Thank you very much indeed. Hi everyone, I hope you can hear, hear me. Um, they always say, don't meet your heroes. Then you find out that your heroes are actually awesome and they love Star Wars. So uh, thank you thank you so much for the, the opportunity to, uh, to present today. Um, I, I guess my task at the end of this uh, webinar now is just to go through uh, the evidence for virtual reality and I'll include augmented reality for CPR training. Um, this is my wonderful hospital here in Manchester. I do have a disclosure. I'm hoping to create a virtual reality content company, um, obviously light years or, or a galaxy far away from Martin though. Um, but um, I have a number of acknowledgements for, the, for, the, for, for what I'm about to present. Uh, they are to Kyung Lee, to Kate Coit, to Sanghee Park, to Todd Chang, and to Timothy Young, who have all contributed in, in this work. Um, what I'd like to do in this last part of this webinar is really just provide a, um, a review, a sort of an overview of the evidence so far for um, augmented and virtual reality with respect to improving CPR performance. Um, I'd like to do this in two halves, uh, not least because of um, the work we did that uh, Federico has very kindly referred to there. That was before the pandemic. And then we've had um, a, a look again after the pandemic, perhaps not in the same depth, but hopefully I can just touch on some areas of interest and that will act as more of a signposting for interested parties. The reason for doing the scoping review was really to, to learn about the evolution and to really look at the opportunity to collaborate on a global level. And obviously this webinar is a great step towards that in terms of accelerating the science and, and of course, enhancing the impact uh, that, uh, that, that to overcome some of the challenges that, that we have with respect to CPR provision in each of our uh, nation countries. So the methodology we used for, for that for the scoping review was really to look at publications per year, the geography, where they came from, what sort of studies were they, what were they looking at, what sort of publication were they in, were the impact factor of those journals, were they being cited, and um, it, interestingly also is how, how are they um, actually being categorised, because um, that, that's important where we were trying to um, build, build the, the, the academia, what keywords were authors using, etc. Um, so the, we used an integrative re, uh, uh, review approach because obviously the database is quite heterogeneous. We looked from 1945 up to 2019 or part way through. Um, we tried to find every single um, article we could and we looked um, and, at all languages. This is for those who are interested. This is the search strategy. The Web of Science one. We looked in Web of Science and, and, and in PubMed. Um, there were some duplicates, and uh, in the end, um, those were the articles here, 22 from Web of Science and 12 in PubMed that we actually analysed at the first part. So we, we saw a year-on-year -year, um, increase in publications. Uh, we stopped um, halfway through 2019, um, but a year-on-year -year increase really markedly in, in uh, about five years ago now. We, uh, the first countries were, of course, uh, Italy and uh, USA. Um, and we can see that um, that a number of other other developed countries were becoming easily, equally um, involved in in contributing to the to the academia study types. Well, you know, we, obviously there are reviews, and, and guilty as charged for producing a, re a review. But the experimental studies, ones that we're really looking at, these range from randomized controlled trials to surveys, and also a large number of proposals or, or proof of concept ideas. 
And um, so we focused on the, those that were in VR and AR, um, particularly the, uh, the studies that were that were not reviews per se. And, and we found that 12 of those really looking at how, to, how they were describing how they've created CPR simulators and the innovative of, of work that's been going on there, which Federico has touched on um, a moment ago, and uh, some were on curriculum designs. And the AR study is really looking at wearable objects or cloths to augment the um, Laredell or other company mannequins that are out there. Um, so uh, the, the 17 were published in journals that we could get hold of and eight were in conference um, proceedings. It's really interesting to see the spread of, of where people were publishing. And obviously there were some really um, high impact uh, circulation resusc resuscitation uh, journal papers as well. And you could see that the citations as, you, as, as one would expect were, were um, lagging behind the publications, which is great. The interesting thing I thought was the database cat categorization of, of where we were putting up um, the papers on, um, on virtual reality or augmented reality to improve CPR. And, and it's really quite diverse, an awful lot in computer science, uh, AI and cybernetic journals, and uh, not as many as we'd think in our um, traditional journals per se at that point. And then if you look at the key words that people were using at that time, this is what the authors were using to, to uh, present their work. They, they were, you know, education was really featuring resuscitation, um, um, CPR as you expect, and, and, and um, virtual reality. Interesting, I, I thought. But then, the, uh, obviously, unfortunately, we had the COVID-19 pandemic. So I just want to present now what's happened after that. So we've looked from 2020 to up to this week and found um, 90 articles to review and we've included 36. Again, we're starting to get more and more articles, which is great. Um, the geography, however, now is, um, is uh, on our right here, we can see a much um, even a spread, uh, which, is, which is awesome from uh, contributors contributors from the Netherlands and from South Korea and from China, from, from USA, as well as um, the countries that were previously contributing. The study types, again, vast, vast majority of experimental studies, which is fantastic. Um, citations lagging behind. Now we're really seeing people um, use keywords like virtual reality and, and cardiopulmonary resuscitation really coming to the, coming to the front. So the overall finding in terms of what is the evidence base, what is the evidence? Well, we knew from the the, the seminal work of of Professor Semerado that, that actually there are really promising studies for both the usability and um, improving outcomes of CPR training using virtual reality, and there was uh, of course the consensus. Uh, piece that's really showed that, that one of the great benefits of virtual reality, uh, reflecting back on um, Federico's talk there, was that it, 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 it speaks to all ages and particularly young people with the possibility of doing at-home CPR training using gamification and gaming, um, particularly focusing on the out-of-hospital cardiac arrest, as uh, Martin said there, to, um, and particularly to improve the use of defibrillation in out of hospital cardiac arrest. So that's the overall finding, as, as you'd expect. There are some really interesting, so if you, if you look at the recent experimental studies over the last couple of years, some really, really interesting innovations. Um, the, the, the use of Instagram uh, augmented reality face fil filters to improve um, CPR training. A lot of focus on utilities, as you'd expect with the new innovation with respect to um, AR um, applications found to be both usable and acceptable. VR, again, found to be safe and low cost. As, uh, VR for CPR found to be attractive to users and not inferior uh, to traditional models, uh, uh, sorry, methodologies of teaching and found to be um, found to have satisfaction ease, and ease of use. In terms of performance, um, the, um, a recent paper on augmented reality CPR feedback systems showed the um, significant chest compression performance change, um, change closer to the to the chest compression guidelines. Um, VR studies showed that um, there was an en enhancement in the process quality of, of basic life support provided. Um, interesting again that the the results are are. Um, are are um, 
diverse, diverse in that virtual reality showed no improvement for the willingness of CPR on stranger CPR in a, in a recent study. Um, also that um, classic BLS course that we're all completely aware of was found to be superior to virtual reality in teaching technical skills. However, the self-reported learning was improved with the virtual with the virtuality part of that uh, trial. Again, we've we've seen the power of the um, of the LifeSaver smartphone app, and we know joined together as one hundred and fifteen percent improvement, etc. Um, we have uh, the the studies that previously have looked at whether it improved um, with respect to face to face training. Well, when that study was um, uh, looked at uh, data looked at again it was found to show that actually there was an increase in CPR quality compliance if we use the new quality uh, metrics of, of rate and depth criteria there are also um, some interesting new directions for um, the use of CPR in virtual reality CPR as an alternative method in OSCE stations and also it's now being used directly post cardiac surgery to train staff and there's thought to be a face and content validity with that study so in conclusion, there's clearly a huge potential to improve CPR training using both virtual reality and augmented reality. And I, and I think we'd all agree that the field is, is, is very diverse, uh, but it's maturing. Uh, geographically, we know that there are some very active um, countries out there, but this is highly dependent on the technology being available. So there's a great emphasis on, and it was great to see um, those uh, HMDs that were um, effectively cardboard, Google cardboard style HMDs in the presentation previously, just to show that, that there is a, a real drive to be as inclusive as possible and as equitable as possible in terms of the tech being available for, for all. There's clearly a high number of novel innovations, which is which is going to continue. And, and the experimental studies show that the, the field is, is now really great for research. Um, Obviously, standardization of terminology will help collaboration advance the field. And I think perhaps the most important thing is this is really an opportunity as ever to develop more global collaborative um, research and, and perhaps a research network really to help us uh, crystallize all our um, ongoing uh, research agendas. So thank you for listening and thank you for allowing me to present at this wonderful webinar. So thank you very much, Ralph, for this presentation. Thanks for summarizing all, all the evidence around the virtual reality for CPR. So uh, if you have any questions, please write on Slido and let's move to, uh, to questions. We have uh, two questions for Silvia. Uh, the first one is uh, how, how much is complicated to, um, to clean the smart glasses and if they are user-friendly and if there are any complexity in their use. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we ask to participants uh, how they, they feel with the, the use of, of these smart glasses. And, and all of them say that it was really easy uh, to, to use. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, let's uh, see. I, I have a question, a comment uh, for Ralph, uh, if, uh, if I may. Uh, thank you very much again to summarize all the evidence, Ralph. Uh, and please, please uh, uh, publish again all your data. Uh, I, I'm convinced as you that uh, we need a, a space, a real space, uh, an event, uh, I, I'll try to push hard and fast uh, uh, ERC scientific committee to put some space in the Congress about virtual reality to create a network. It, it, it was very nice to see that uh, we spread the word around the world about virtual reality. We, but as you mentioned before, we need science, we, we need a randomized control trial, we need to understand it's only a choice, uh, it's only uh, a way of delivery content. Uh, uh, probably we need some terminology, some, uh, some we, we, probably we need to teach to educator the difference between a, augmented reality, virtual reality, what is the difference, what is the content. Uh, so probably we need a workshop to teach them 
a big question for you, but also for Silvia, uh, for myself. Uh, I spent, uh, I start with complicated uh, uh, ad set, the cost 2,000 euro in 2009 was uh, uh, for probably three, four, five person on research. We passed through uh, several devices now, for example, some device cost only 200 euro. Uh, so uh, it's absolutely easy to, be, to buy a, a headset. Uh, or we decide, for example, uh, from the complex one to the smartphone to produce an app for smartphone. We need to implement all this environment, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality. I know this is a very hard question to, to you, Ralph, and to Sylvia. How we can transfer all this content in the real life from uh, a standard of care mannequin, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, tube, uh, all the, the equipment, how we can transfer all this new technology to the real world. Ralph, you have some tip and tricks. Uh, and Silvia is also for you. Ralph, please. Okay, so uh, I, obviously I, I don't have an answer to that question, but I, I have perhaps um, directions of travel that we can explore. Um, personally, I, I loved your Relive game. Um, Manchester is, is quite famous for gaming and we've been having really interesting conversations with respect to looking at esports and really looking at because I mean esports there are many many more people watching esports than watch the Super Bowl and it's about 100 million people that watch the Super Bowl each year so esports is huge and and the, the the concept of relive or introducing CPR into the gaming environment, I really think will be a excuse the pun a game changer. Um, uh, not in those. I mean, I, I'm I'm not a huge gamer. Not in a shoot up game, but in more something that's more like a a, a voyage where you're where you're traveling through with companions and you have to save someone, etc. That sort of thing. I think when we can get it much more into that um, uh, arena, we'll, there'll be a. a, a profound effect and also the fun i mean i'm, I'm clearly biased we, we've i've done projects with todd chang with uh, um in schools and, and and i commend you uh federico and um all, all of the researchers out there that do, do do work in in schools it's that's really the direction of travel that i think will will improve the out of hospital cardiac arrest data for the united kingdom and again huge kudos to resource council um uk and um, all the researchers in the United Kingdom that have, that have driven the, the law changes so that we have that in, in our curricula in the, four, in the four nations here, which is absolutely fantastic. But that's where I would really target resources and the resources can be the whole spectrum that you've articulated. Thank you, Ralph. I definitely agree with 100% uh, one, of your, your comments. Silvia, some thoughts for, from your, your perspective? And there is also one question for you after mm -hmm. on the slide. Yep. Okay. Well, to implement this type of uh, augmented reality with smart glasses, uh, it could be necessary that the the population uh, wears the, this type of, of wearable. And in fact, currently is is not uh, a reality yet. Uh, but uh, I trust that in the in the future uh, it will be, or, or maybe at least that uh, this kind of technology uh, can be implemented in in some places. Uh, for example, for for CPR programs, or also for video assist in a real emergency situation in a out of hospital environment. Thank you, Silvia. There is a, a question for you on Slido from Alla. Some time is needed to feel reality in augmented reality. Is it comf comfortable to teach CPR such way for all participants? This is the question, not easy to reply to this question, yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, it was. There was a, a trainer, the, the instructor uh, can connect uh, 
like like with a, a video call of your smart, smartphone but with the smart glasses and and he was uh, talking and sending images and gifts uh, to the participant and participant uh, can 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 learn perfectly the the cpr with this augmented reality thank you sylvia as a general comment uh, uh, accordingly with ralph uh, yes definitely uh, if you ask me the the future vision of vr definitely should be on uh, on school children um, because probably this is the way the tone of voice or the tool that, that they like to use uh, nobody probably over 20 or over 25 uh, will be happy to uh, to use a vr i don't know but definitely school children are very uh, open mind and are not reluctant to to use vr and play games uh, the my 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 dear friends that are working in a serious game and gaming don't love the the the, the term gamification but probably some some kind of gamification challenge or competition uh, with the use of VR could be uh, part of the story for the future. Um, this this is in line with your with your thoughts, uh, Ralph. Uh, but I, I I think we need uh, to keep it simple. Uh, technology will be simple uh, in the next uh, I think in five years. Uh, also cheaper. So I, I remain uh, a believer uh, with my conflict of interest because I spent a lot of my life in, in VR. But definitely we need to invest time in networking, science, and school children. Uh, definitely. Tommaso, any other question from Slido? Uh, you are on mute. No? Sorry. Uh... There is a question, uh, a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is uh, uh, asking an opinion about uh, um, 360 degree virtual reality video. And that is for you, Federico. Okay. And, okay, let's start with this one. Yeah, uh, you can use the uh, video uh, as Martin, uh, Martin is is a real expert. Uh, you can use because you are fully in in in, uh, in a real in a real environment. Uh, depends on on your. I always uh, because I I am always uh, uh, fascinated by real real virtual reality. Uh, so the reality, like in the video could be reproduced in the real life. Virtual reality, like uh, the, the old film, like Tron on Legacy or uh, some sci-fi film, uh, attract me more than the real life, but probably it's my, it's my conflict of interest. Uh, if you think uh, about the, the, last, uh, the last film from Steven Spielberg about virtual reality, I love that idea. But I'm a little bit scared that uh, uh, probably in the future we can't exactly know if you are in the real life or in virtual reality. This could be a problem for psychology in the future. Thank you, Federico. Last question, and uh, it is not addressed to a specific speaker, but uh, I read it. Uh, they ask if uh, uh, there are any research in using virtual reality for tactical uh, simulation training for, uh, for example, tactical emergency casualty care training. Some of you have uh, experiences or? No experience, but uh, several, 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 several. Ralph uh, say yes with the, uh, yeah. Several uh, experience all over the world, mesh casualty, uh, it's not nice to talk about war, but uh, yes, several several experiences in VR. Okay, no other question on Slido. So okay. very good. It was a 
pleasure and we we received a lot of great feedback on slido many uh many appreciated the the webinar a, a lot of great comments and so thank you for participating thank you for listening and uh, federico would you like to say something to conclude yes if uh sylvia ralph and myself try to give uh, the last motto to engage all the audience to come in the uh, virtual reality world sylvia before Well, the 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 augmented uh, reality it is a, a good uh, tool for learn CPR training, and also it's it's funny to use it, and it could be a good option. Thank you, Silvia. Ralph, I, I would echo all your thoughts. Um, I, I mean, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, so um, may the force be with you, Federico, for all the fantastic work that you do and Sylvia, and I hope that we can eventually form some sort of alliance, some sort of network where we can really uh, do some great research. Thank you, Raf. From my side, uh, link long and prosper to CPR training and link long and prosper to virtual reality CPR training. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Tommaso, to be with me. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you, Martin. Uh, enjoy the evening and see you soon all over the, all over the rainbow. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.